My name is Rico Möckel. I'm an associate professor for robotics and intelligent systems at Maastricht University uh, at the Department of Advanced Computing Sciences. And I yeah, have the great pleasure of serving the CORSEC project as a coordinator. Hi, my name is Maria Alexandrova. I'm Innovation Projects and Sustainability Manager at Nasekomo. Nasekomo is actually a scale-up company. We also fall into the definition for deep tech company, and we were actually a startup until last year. So we recognize ourselves as actually a, a, a company that's in, in the build and uh, in, 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 in the grow, and therefore we see we see ourselves as part of the ecosystem. So we constantly work with entrepreneurs. We support agri-tech startups constantly. This month we mentored uh, startups in three accelerators in Bulgaria in the field of agri-tech. The food of the day was produced by a startup that we mentored in such program because they achieve sustainable transport. They do donations to people in need. Every Everything that is connected to food and technology, we see ourselves connected to because we believe that very soon the, the future of business will be the system approach. It won't be possible for, for a company to work isolated to achieve sustainable products without working in system with, with the rest. So this is the way we actually treat right now the, the ecosystem. Uh, and we're very proud to be able to do that. Project as complex as Corosect, where we really want to leverage, uh, put in recent developments of artificial intelligence, uh, where we actually uh, put in recent developments of robotics and biology all together to really drive innovation in uh, insect farming, you need many different uh, levels of expertise. And um, this is really the strength of these European projects, where yeah, European project really means like we have experts from a lot of different European countries. We have like 19 different partners actually working together where we have access to the expertise of these individual partners. These are the insect farms that provide, of course, uh, expertise in their daily businesses, in their biological processes. These are researchers from universities who research and perform new innovation in uh, insect uh, rearing, uh, growing insects. And these are companies, technology providers who use state-of-the-art Uh, software development, state-of-the-art robotic development, hardware developments. Uh, these are universities and research institutes like my own university, Master University, university or like a research institute from uh, Greece, SURF, that are strongly developing different types of artificial intelligence that we actually make accessible and usable for these insect farms. And all of these different partners get together build a strong team to push forward these developments in insect farming. I would say that Corsect is actually a moonshot itself because uh, it managed to achieve a couple of things that were unthinkable a couple of years ago. First of all, we joined companies and institutions with completely different culture, processes and fields of work into one topic that is absolutely unknown to them, which is the insect. So we bring together tech providers of robotic technologies, of integration technologies, AI and virtual reality to renovate a very traditional farming industry. But these traditional processes operate with a very new to the science creatures like the insects. So this was the first endeavor. The second thing we did is actually we tried to to address all the types of farms, all the, because in Europe, a couple of insects are regulated for industrial use, but they have their particularities, so you cannot treat them as one. For example, our black soldier fly has a bit of different needs than the crickets or the mealworms, but we try to make the machines help them all. So we had this flexible approach that is not very comfortable for the tech partners, but they made it. And we are very excited to show that actually we overcame a lot of challenges. And speaking about moonshots, what will be the next, the next destination is actually how now these validated technologies can reach the market and how they can help farmers all over Europe, farmers from different sizes, and how we can keep this adaptability to help uh, the farmers grow. So that would be, I would say, a very good expedition if we manage to help Europe 
adopt this insect rearing technologies on large scale because then we will start looking at our resources, at our low value streams and byproducts that we treat as something not very valuable, not useful, not as waste or something that we try to rid of, but as a source of value because insects can unlock up to 10 times more value in plant-based biomass. And instead of going for recycle, we upcycle it. We produce protein that the industry needs, people need to meet the growing population of the earth. And right now Europe is dealing with this with imports. So we'll help Europe become more resilient and support the local economies. You ask about uh, the ethical considerations also of automation of insect farming. Uh, in, indeed, Corosect is very active uh, in uh, robotization, so bringing robots, uh, doing a lot of different jobs, tasks actually within the uh, insect farming industry. And as a, a strong European project, there are of course like uh, not just the technical things that we are actually working on, but there are also the ethical ones. And uh, Corosec, for instance, is being very closely monitored by the European project officer. Uh, Corosec is also closely monitored within the project by some experts on ethical and uh, legal considerations. So we have a partner from the KU Leuven, who is a very strong uh, research partner, who is uh, yeah, monitoring very closely the processes, uh, who is very cl closely monitoring also the uh, EU regulations the national regulations, and um, is doing active research on the work that we are doing with regard to ethical guidelines. Um, so as an output of this is like we are providing also to others actually ethical guidelines. We are helping in better understanding what the ethical considerations are uh, for using these robots. And we are also monitoring ourselves very closely and we're being also externally very closely monitored to ensure that there is a very high quality of the robots and technology we provide and that there are no ethical considerations actually that we are uh, in disagreement with. On the ethics aspects, first of all, we work in an environment where we, uh, we very much support the debate on ethics in the field of AI. We believe this is extremely important to be achieved as well as any other standard in the industry. It, there must be standards on this and we support this process and Corus Act, uh, which you witnessed today is actually one of the examples of this. Uh, we follow all the regulations and all the debates on, on the ethics standards that exist in Europe and in the States and globally. And right now we comply with uh, all the European uh, requirements for, for, for ethics uh, in the field. And uh, we are ready to collaborate on that field because we understand this is very important. And maybe to add to finally on, on your question, a final hue, is that the way we see the role of technologies and especially of digitalization is not to replace people. Actually, these technologies should help people deface from operations that don't require skills, don't rely on creativity. And even now, we already see challenge to find people willing to do farm operations. In agriculture, actually these low added value operations is a huge challenge. There is huge deficit of people willing to do that job. So this is where we see the robots helping us. So people could focus on added value tasks, on creating better products and achieving better efficiency in agriculture. Insect farming is a wonderful playground or like a wonderful substrate for developing state-of-the-art technologies for two reasons. There is first of all, of course, the sustainable development of uh, food production, uh, which makes this very valuable. So the fact that we can make uh, food actually and feed for animals actually in a sustainable way, this is like some uh, major impact, of course. From a robotics technology point of view, insect farming is a wonderful uh, example and a wonderful ground for innovative developments because we are dealing here with live matter, so with insects, uh, insects that might not cooperate, uh, insects that you have to uh, treat gently, uh, that you, uh, where you have to take care of their needs. Uh, and that pushes us actually to push developments in artificial intelligence and robotics to the next level. It's not possible to use standard robotic technology from the making industry and just transfer this directly into insect farming. We have to push innovation there. And this goes and starts actually with that we need like more versatile 
ways of handling these insects because they grow, they change their size, their feet is changing. A computer vision that you normally would just develop for one use case, you now suddenly have to make very versatile, very adaptive, so that it can take care of the insects at very different life st uh, stages of their life cycle. Uh, with the example of the black soldier flies, we are dealing with eggs, with small larvae, with large larvae, we are dealing with pupae, uh, we are dealing with actual flies that fly around. So you see like it's a wonderful area actually where you can really drive a computer vision. It's also something that really brings us to the state of the art and to the edge of the developments, pushes us actually to make things move forward. Because yes, we have to operate with insects that like to live, live in the dark. Insects that produce different gases during their life cycle that make it actually challenging for different technologies. So yeah, it's, it's a wonderful area actually that really helps us to push things that we would not be able to push actually if we would be doing the same developments for other fields of industry. Since uh, we understand that innovation, especially in the field of agritech, and especially when we talk about insects, is a very hot topic, very interesting, that raises debates. Uh, but the way we see it is that actually technology and advanced uh, technologies like the artificial intelligence, virtual reality, will enable us to reach a precision level of farming operations that will de-risk the technology, that de-risk this kind of business, will make it more secure, will make it adaptable to scale, and will help us achieve a standardization of the products, of the processes. And actually, this is what will help us establish this technology as something that is not futuristic, but in our reality. Why we need to achieve that? Because farming is right now one of the most sustainable technologies that can help us achieve produce protein that is very healthy and sustainable and can help us reform the agricultural systems that right now exhaust the planet create a lot of carbon emissions in the atmosphere and also exploit the resources in a much more globalized way which is not not good for the local farmers for the for the european agriculture so if we achieve that scale and that standard operation of our technologies, then we will help Europe become more resilient. We will help Europe become independent from import of food ingredients, feed ingredients and chemical fertilizers. We are heavily leveraging, of course, data. I myself, I have a background in data science and in artificial intelligence and in robotics. And what I love personally a lot about uh, Corosect, about our project is that we can really start using very strongly uh, the synergies between these different fields. So we have uh, insect farming on one hand, where we get a lot of data from insects that allow us actually to grow these insects better, but also to ensure actually the quality of the insects, uh, to use them as nutrition, for instance, for pets, uh, is actually improved. So uh, we are very heavily using actually artificial intelligence and data science as part of the Corsac project. To give a very practical example, we are monitoring, for instance, the growth of these insects, their color. We are monitoring automatically much faster and more extensively than you could do uh, with a team of human co-workers if there are like any diseases, if there are like any things that might actually impact uh, the quality of these uh, insects. And their data science and uh, the artificial intelligence that we use uh, is a very strong key player actually uh, to help this industry. So it's a perfect actually match of robotics, uh, artificial intelligence and insect farming that is being leveraged there actually uh, by exploring deeply the op opportunity to that we can gather a lot more data with these robots, but then use them actually in a very responsible way to improve the quality of, of the process and the quality of the products. Ten years ago, I'm speaking here from my own professional experience, I was extremely inspired by a report by the, the Foundation Sustainia, which claimed that where the progress, the progress will be born only in the cross-sectoral fields in a very short future. That was huge inspiration for me as a young professional. And now I'm extremely happy and proud that my work actually demonstrates exactly this.
challenging use cases as the one of Nasekomo of Corsic. So how we bring technology to help us breed uh, one very sophisticated uh, a living creature that we don't know much about, but we know that it will be very useful for, for the people and for our economy, is a fantastic challenge that can be solved only if you combine experience from different fields of science and if you borrow best practices from different uh, industries. And on top of that, if you have an open approach and work with partners from outside your organizations, from different fields of work and uh, education, as is now the instance of Corus Act. My hope and my dream, of course, is that we can drive a lot of positive developments with uh, a further advancement in artificial intelligence. Um, I'm not so naive that I believe that this happens automatically. We have to monitor ourselves very carefully, we have to monitor each other very carefully, and we have to make sure that we use artificial intelligence in a very responsive way. So always with having like a long-term perspective on what do we do good for humankind. So not just like on a short term of like what is the next way to gain some money or like how to actually just drive some economic processes. And there my hope is that we can advance to a point of view where we can really augment and support human skills, making humans actually capable of doing things that it makes their job easier, that it makes it more enjoyable, that we give you the quality time actually that you actually deserve and that you need to be together with your loved ones, that we can support the elderly, um, that we can support the kid children actually in school, uh, and that we can solve many of our societal challenges Things like, you know, shortage of teachers, shortage of caregivers, actually. The fact that we are dealing with a changing environment where we need to change how, the way how we do food production, how we produce our food uh, goods, mm -hmm. the different things that we need actually to live a good life, but doing that actually in a sustainable way. And for that, AI is one of the key players to achieve these goals. Five years from now, we believe that insect farming will be democratized, which means will make these technologies accessible to every agro-industrial that can source low-value streams or has to deal with biomass that is not very valuable. And we'll be able to install such technologies close to the value stream. And instead of these recycling methods, we'll achieve upcycling and produce ecological ingredients for sustainable farming for sustainable support of the plants because one of our products is actually organic fertilizer so we'll offset the chemical fertilizers which are in heavy use right now and we'll be able through the technologies to support every farmer in this network approach to receive the best knowledge and standards so we'll be able to achieve equal quality and predictable volumes of these precious proteins and fertilizers.